Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm sure you've all had a hugely busy Christmas and are now starting to put your feet up and relax. Enjoy a bit of me time. I know everybody needs it. Hope Christmas was wonderful for you. For those of you who haven't met us before, my name is Debbie. I tend to do this side of the camera, so the introduction, the demonstrating, and so on and so forth. And my colleague Laura, who tends to do all of the technical stuff, the IT stuff that's way beyond me, you will hear, but if she has her way, you won't actually see her. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> so can I first start by wishing you all a happy new year? It's fast approaching. So I thought today, just as a time to reflect, time to kind of gather your senses together and plan for that year coming, might be a good idea to introduce my floristry box. Now, every week when you watch us on live stream, I always mention my florist toolkit or my florist box, but I've never actually told you what I've got in it. So I thought I'd introduce everything that I have in my kit and explain to you why I have it in there and hopefully that will inspire you perhaps to use some bits and pieces yourself. It's also a great time to gather all these bits and pieces together for your forward planning. So never too soon to start planning for the new year. Right, so I'm going to start with scissors, which in my opinion are one of the most important things in the florist toolkit. I personally prefer to use the carbon blade ones. Now that's these ones. They are a wee bit more expensive probably than some of the other um, scissors that are available, but believe me, they are worth the money. They're almost indestructible. So that's your carbon blade scissors. I also usually have another pair of scissors. Now these are just, we just call these floral scissors. I tend to use these for ribbon. Um, and it's really important actually that you keep a spare pair of scissors for your ribbon. Because if you cut any wires or anything that's a little bit woody or quite a strong stem with your scissors, you're actually going to eat away at that blade and when you come to then cut ribbon, you're going to tear it rather than cut it. So keep a pair of scissors available for your ribbon. Then as well as that, having mentioned those hard woody stems that your scissors don't always want to tackle, I love to use these um, secateurs. I actually haven't come across anything yet that they won't cut, <laughs> wooden stem wise. So yeah, really useful piece of kit that. Now, having said taking care of your scissors, because at the end of the day, they are your most important piece of toolkit. They are what earn you your money, apart from your hands and your, <laughs> your design techniques. But if you don't have scissors, you wouldn't be able to work. So to protect your scissors, I'd recommend having a pair of wire cutters. You can use those to snip all those hard wires that actually your scissors don't really want to tackle. You don't want to mess your blades up. Okay. Now there is a school of thought, having said that your scissors are your most important piece of kit, there is a school of thought for people that only use a knife. Personally, that's not something I've ever got on particularly well with. I do use a crafting knife, but not necessarily to cut all of my stems. However, I do have a craft knife in my toolkit because I find it really useful for other bits and pieces. But should you prefer to cut your stems with a knife, this is what I would recommend. So this is your craft knife, really sharp. Okay, so that's all your sort of cutting tools really. <coughs> then I would recommend for roses, such as this beautiful variety here which is called toffee, I would recommend you using some rose strippers just to remove the thorns um, and the leaves. It's really simple to use. So you can see it has three blades or three spikes. I'm just going to remove the piece of plastic that's holding it. You literally lay the rose in between those and just pull the strippers away. And that removes all of the leaves below the waterline and all of the sharp thorns. So a really useful piece of kit to save your fingers. Okay, so that's the scissors. 
and the um, rose de thorners. Then once you start to progress from there, we've got the other pieces of essential kit. Now I'll start with pot tape. So this is pot tape or anchor tape, you might know it as. We sell two different sizes. We sell a 12 millimeter and a six millimeter. Six millimeter I tend to use for slightly smaller pieces of oasis or slightly smaller jobs that I'm doing. The wider piece I use to give more anchorage. So if you've got a pedestal arrangement and you're trying to anchor quite a bit um, of oasis into a container, I tend to use that. I'll show you how I use it. Excuse me one moment. So we've got the 12 millimeter anchor tape here. Just gonna remove these for one moment. Now, the wet, the wet foam that I'm using is, is actually dry because I'm not going to put an arrangement together. But assuming this was soaked, just push it into the bowl. Then, <laughs> when you can find the end of the anchor tape, here we go. Cut a piece off the size that you need. Now, I tend to nip the centre because it then takes less surface area up of the, of the wet foam so you're not taking up too much space and then take that in as simple as that okay so that's your anchor tape move those out of the way we do also sell a clear one, and that's really good. If you're using glassware or a container that perhaps needs something that you can't see quite, you can't see your, your mechanics quite so easily on, then perhaps use the clear tape. That's really good and nice and strong as well. So next, I'm going to go on to our tack tape. Now, you see, probably if you've watched us before, you've seen me do large arrangements on the top of containers that then cascade down. To secure those containers at the top of the glassware, or the tall glassware, I tend to use this. Now, this is called tack tape. It's sticky. It's almost a little bit like blue tack, really, but a lot more sticky. So I tend to roll up tiny little pieces and I would place those on the bottom of the container that I'm using. And as you can see, it is quite sticky. Fingers are going with it. <laughs> That's my fingers more than the container, I think. There we go. And then I would force that onto the top of the container twist it slightly and then it will anchor into position. Okay, so that's your tack tape. Another really useful piece of kit. <clears throat> also, as far as tapes are concerned, we have parafilm. Now we sell both the white and the green parafilm. And we also sell this one, which is called Stemtex. Just gonna open this one up. Personally, I prefer to use parafilm, and I'll just grab one out of there. Now this you tend to use if you're wiring up um, a rose or anything that's a, a buttonhole that you've, you've cut off really. Let me show you what I mean. If we cut the rose at an angle, and then push a wire up the stem, And then I would use parafilm just to, and can you see that, Laura? Is that yeah. close enough? So I would just use that, whoops, a daisy, to cover up my mechanics. So basically, you don't see the ugly end of the wire, but it also has the added bonus of actually sealing the end of the rose stem 
to actually secure as much moisture in the stem as it possibly can. Okay, if you don't seal that stem, then you're going to get moisture evaporating from it and your rose is actually not going to last quite as well. So I'll just cut that off and I'll show you again how the paraffin works. It is incredibly stretchy, as you will see. Oops. You can see how stretchy it is. So the idea is when you twist it around your wire, you stretch and twist. So stretch and twist. And it's as easy as that. So that's your parafilm. I tend to use the white parafilm if I'm taping flowers on a cake, a wedding cake, or something that's white. Say, for example, you're doing an all gypsophila headband and you want it to be as white as the gypsophila, then I would use white for that. I'll just show you quickly the stem text. Now, some people find parafilm quite difficult to work with. I have to say, if you're one of those people that suffer with really cold hands, you will find that parafilm is difficult to work with because it snaps quite easily. You need that little bit of heat in your hands to help it stretch. You don't have such an issue with Stemtex. Stemtex is almost like a crepe paper and it's sticky. You see what I mean? So the actual stickiness helps it to bind to the wire. Still helps, still helps if you stretch it slightly, but it is incredibly sticky. I can see what I mean. <laughs> I also, this is my personal opinion, obviously, um, it doesn't work for everybody, but my personal opinion is you get a much, much neater finish with parafilm than you do with the stem text. Now, I have known people to actually trim stem text down the centre. I'll show you what I mean by that. But if you cut stem text like so, oops. then you will get a much nicer finish. Okay, so you can see that's much, much neater than keeping it wide. Still not quite as neat as the parafilm in my opinion, but that is one thing that you can do to get that neater finish. He said that's quite time consuming. I'm probably giving the impression here that I prefer parafilm. <laughs> right, okay, so that's our tapes. Let's get rid of those. So the rest of my kit are wires. I'll touch on the wires now. I tend to have really two major wires in my kit box or forestry box. That's a silver rose wire. Now, I use those for fine, delicate work. So, for example, I would use it... Gosh, my hands are really sticky after that stem text. I would use it, these, for example, to stitch wire a leaf. And again... I would just bind that with some parafilm for exactly the same reasons as we did with the rose. just helps to secure moisture in the stem. And by stitching it, so you want to go really sort of two thirds of the way down the leaf. And by stitching it, you've actually got that little bit of flexibility with the leaf when you pop it into a corsage or buttonhole. So that's one way I would use a silver wire. Another way is to make rose sepal pins. So I just cut a few pieces off here. 
very tiny little pieces of wire that I've just cut off. And then make a very small hairpin. I don't know if you can see those all right. And then with the rose that I'm going to make into a buttonhole, stroke the sepals back against the main bloom of the rose and then push the sepal pin in at an angle and that actually prevents the rose from opening any further. Okay, I do tend to do all of the sepals but just for demonstration purposes only, I've just done the three there. And it will actually stop that rose from opening any, any further. Then the other leaf, the other leaf, I just picked the leaf up, <laughs> the other wire that I would use that you saw me use to support wire the rose is a 0 0.70 by 30 millimeter stub wire. In my opinion, they're the most utilizable wires, but you might find you need a heavier grade if you're doing heavier work or a lighter grade if you're doing lighter work, but that's a good starting point. Okay, so that's my two stub wires. And then we have binding wire. So binding wire has all sorts of applications. You can use it, for example, to bind moss onto a moss ring. I'm a bit reluctant to mention that because I'm sure you've all been mossing like crazy over the Christmas period, getting those Christmas wreaths out. So you probably don't want to see too much binding wire for the moment. <laughs> but there is other reason, other ways that you can use it. Some people prefer if they're doing a hand-tied um, bridal bouquet to actually bind with wire rather than twine. So yeah, there are lots of reasons to use a binding wire as opposed to a stub wire. So that's your binding wire. Then I also have, it's not something I use a huge amount of if I'm honest, but a lot of people do, and that's the floral adhesive. So you can use that to glue stems into oasis. So for example, if you're doing a long cascading bridal bouquet, just a little bit of glue at the bottom of the stem where it goes into the oasis, just helps to secure it that little bit better. So when the bride's walking down the aisle and you've got a bit of swing going on at those lower, those lower stems, that glue just helps to secure it and keep it all in place. You can also use it to glue foliage onto a funeral tribute. And I have known people to use it when they're gluing um, a ribbon edging onto a funeral tribute as well. So yeah, really, really usable. Not something that I tend to use a lot of, as I said a really useful item to have in your box. Now, talking about um, putting a ribbon edging onto a funeral tribute, we've got steel pins here. Let me just cut that open and show you. So these are your regular florist steel pins, if I can get them out of the box. <laughs> Uh, oh well, we've got some out anyway. <laughs> so I would use those for both buttonholes if you're not using a pearl headed pin. But I have also used them before to pin leaves onto a funeral tribute and I've also used it to pin a slightly more delicate ribbon edging onto a funeral tribute. So if you're using something like a satin or something like an organza that you're um, Probably your mossy pin is going to be a little bit too heavy and too thick to push through the ribbon and something like this is a good alternative. So that's your floristry steel pins. Then also have a stapler here. Now this is a perfect stapler to use because you can use it with one hand. So you complete the ribbon and you don't have to keep putting it down, you can go ahead and, and, and pleat the ribbon ready for your funeral tribute. So that's your stapler. And then, I don't know why I've left, left this till last, because actually it's, it's quite an important piece of kit. This is your binding twine. Now, I prefer to use the natural, because you can use it for so many things. 
I tend to use this to bind stems together for a bridal bouquet or for a hand-tied presentation bouquet. I also tend to use it to bind stems on a buttonhole. So if I show you what I mean, Where are we going with this? And then just tie the ends together. And you could, if you wanted to, finish it with a tiny little bow. Oops. It gives you a much more rustic, let's start that again, gives you a much more rustic finish to the buttonhole than just leaving it with plain parafilm. Having said that, if the buttonhole is being placed into a button, an actual buttonhole on a suit, there's not an awful lot of point in covering the stem with anything other than parafilm because no one's going to see it. But there you have it. So a really useful addition to your floristry box. I think that about covers it. I think I've gone all over, over everything, haven't I, Laura? <laughs> I think I've, I've completed the rule. So I think I've given you a good explanation as to why I use certain pieces of of, of, of kit um, and as I said it's a really good opportunity to start planning for 2020, planning for those weddings, getting together all the bits and pieces that you're going to need so you don't have any of those last minute panics. You don't want to get on site at a wedding venue and find you've got no pins, no tape, so on and so forth. So I think it's a really good idea to actually check your florist toolkit box every time you go out on site and then make sure you've got everything that you need. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share us with your friends and family, and obviously don't forget to like us. Keep those comments coming, and also don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, where we've got lots more ideas that you can pick up, perhaps explore ideas yourselves, and don't forget, we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.